Hello, Sam from Tool Hut here today. Today we're going to continue our training session on scopes. Hello, Sam from Tool Hut here today. Today we're going to continue our training session on scopes. This is week two. So the whole idea of my scope training, let me turn this light off. Is that better, hopefully? The whole idea of my scope training is to get you using your scope. We're probably not gonna go into actual using the scope to diagnose cars until way later in the session. So if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for silver bullets, if you're looking for the ability to translate patterns, that's not what this course is about in the beginning. So a lot of guys have asked me, a lot of people have asked me why I think a scope is important in the shop. So every shop out there today is looking for a technician, a good technician. And if you're the typical read a code, put a part in kind of guy, you're, you guys are a dime a dozen. So if you want to separate yourself, if you want to earn more income, if you want to name your income, uh, your abilities, you want to go in with demands that not everybody else can do, I believe that the ability to use a scope, the ability to use a scope to accurately diagnose a vehicle is key in your argument. So what happens when you start using a scope? you return less parts, you, uh, you begin to test components. Everything that is electrical on a vehicle can be diagnosed with a scope. Every electrical component. Now, I'm not saying it's necessary to use it for a scope for every component, but just understand, with practice, with some known goods, with a known good database, your ability to repair vehicles is going to come a long ways. So, what I want you to start with, just like I did last week, we do relative compression. Why did I pick relative compression? Because it's quick and it's easy and it's valuable. So, this is essentially a compression test on an engine without having to pull any spark plugs. So, I'm not going to tell you that there's an amperage to a PSI rating. Every starter is a little different. The battery capacities are different. What you're always looking for on a scope, just like you are with a scanner, I believe, is you're looking for the odd man out. So if you're not trying to look for the odd man out, you're probably um, over-interpreting the values that you're given, in my opinion. So. I wanted to start with relative compression because I think this is a test that every technician could use on his day-to-day -day operations. So last week I had you just hook up to the battery and get a relative compression. So we're not using an amp clamp. We will use the amp clamp later on down the road, but right now we're not using the amp clamp. So what I've done is I've got my scope hooked up, uh, channel one and channel two. I've got channel one hooked up uh, to my battery, just like we did last week. And I've got channel two set as my trigger. Now I will tell you right from the get-go here, this is not typically the way I hook up my scope. Um, typically, I will set up my scope on an ignition coil as a sink on channel one, and that's how I always do it. Um, more than likely, I'll misinterpret what I'm reading here, but I want you guys to see the consistency is also the thing. So once you hook up your scope, you always hook it up the same. I like the sink on channel one. So let's go ahead and do our relative compression just like we did last week, except we're adding a sink. I keep calling it a trigger. It's not really a trigger. It's a sink. And the whole idea is now we can decipher the humps on the voltage scale is figuring out which cylinder it is. Now, you have to hook up to the ignition side of this 
because nobody knows when they fire the injectors. Every car is a little different when they fire the injectors unless it's direct injected. And even those can vary. So ignition is the consistent input. So, all right, so let me get the light turned back on here. I'll show you what I've done and then we'll crank this car over. Okay, so what I've done is I've got channel two set up as my sink. It's set up on the primary ignition side of my coil. It is pierced, so all you non-piercers, get over yourselves. And then channel one is hooked up right to my battery cable, just like I did last week. I do have a loop in here for, uh, for the fuel pump fuse this week. Uh, I'm going to show you, we're going to do something a little different with that here in a little bit. So I'm going to pull the fuse here and then I'm going to crank it over so we're have it essentially just like we did last week, except for the fuel pump or this little loop here. All right. So I'm going to apologize. My battery died in my camera here. I didn't realize it. I made a much longer video. I probably shouldn't have. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank the vehicle over now and try to fill up the screen. I like to get lots of data and then zoom in. So I cranked it for 15 or 20 seconds here. And then we're going to zoom in. And the humps up are our primary ignition. I do not have an attenuator on them. Uh, I wasn't really monitoring that circuit, so everybody does them a little different. Uh, the humps down are the voltage down. That's when the piston is the top, so I'll uh, pull a cursor over here so you can see. So right straight up from there is the compression stroke on cylinder one, and then it's four, three, two on this one, and then it starts over. So hopefully this is helpful. So the challenge this week is five more cars with this setup. Next week we're going to get into crank to scoping some sensors. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to follow me along here. Ring the bell to be notified. Thumbs up, thumbs down, questions, comments, concerns. Have a great day.